this was an accident. Just like this film, it wasn't supposed to happen. We started making a movie about everyday people. Then, we discovered these guys, and everything changed. We learned these aren't stunts. It's more profound. This is creative expression and freedom at its most fundamental. They taught us that it was okay to see things differently. To realize the beauty that can exist in each moment. We followed them to the edges of society. It's opener there in the wide open air. And we started to see things from their perspective. started understanding the rhythm and flow of their reasoning. Eventually, we learn their philosophy, the thing that drives them, and it changed our lives. All they want is to be and to last. This became a film about people in motion. And, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. I think we can all agree it's Birdie Man. It's <laughs> unanimous, all of us, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It was actually one of the first times I'd ever gotten out and traveled for like a good solid chunk of time. So, um, I don't know, in general, I think just getting out there and doing it was my favorite. But I think Birdie Man was like, the most memorable. Yeah. We had to rely on each other. I mean, yeah. there were times when, <laughs> when we didn't have water. We didn't have food. Yeah, we're like, do you, oh, you, you, can't really you got some trail mix? You got some trail mix? Come on. Come on. <laughs> we have a peanut. <laughs> what was your most, uh, well, you said memorable. What was your worst moment? Uh, hmm. um, hmm. I mean, it sounds like trail mix was your worst moment. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't, though. It was like, it was really cool, that was cool to, though, to just, live like that. Yeah. You know, um, everything was covered in dust, and it kind of, like we, we couldn't bathe really, it was just, but we stayed clean from this dust that coated us. Yeah, it was weird, and it kind of like maybe flaked off or something, but we were, I, I thought we were gonna smell like rank people all over. <laughs> yeah, was, I, I mean, we've heard about Burning Man, I've heard about it like from my whole life, and I've been thinking, we're gonna have some hippies, just like gnarly, no one's gonna be showering, we're just gonna be like, you know, rolling around, like, you know? But really, nobody really smelled. Nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> covered, covered in, in case dust. In you guys are wondering. It, yeah, that was uh, that was what I was kind of worried about a little bit. <laughs> it was cool. Um, the worst part, I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe the long, like when we were tired and trying oh, to get yeah, out. The long tree, the, okay, the long, long driving. Yeah, we flew up to Seattle, but when we came down, we drove. That was pretty bad. The driving, drove, like all the way from Seattle down to San Fran, and then drove down to San Diego. So yeah, it'd be like a day of driving, we're all tired, time. get out of the car, try and do awesome things that are good enough to be filmed, and then get back <laughs> in the car and then drive <laughs> for another day. Hot and sweaty in the car was probably the only bad part of the cool thing. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Like we all just got to know each other a lot better throughout the experience. So yeah, the car rides were cool too because they were so long. They might have been a little bit, you know, uncomfortable <laughs> and stuff when we were just like cramped or whatever. But it's bonding. Yeah, I mean, as friends, road trips are awesome. This was it was just incredible. I, I mean, so that being the worst part, it, there was no real bad part of our entire experience. I, I don't think. I, I didn't really enjoy getting injured. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, that, that wasn't the, the the worst part for me was getting was like being there, not being able to train to train. Yeah, to, because I I hate that you know like in recovery period you have to tell yourself no I gotta not do things I'm gonna make it worse. And then, so it's just sort of this internal conflict, but um, I I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, both of us had a little bit of injuries. I had, a, I had an eye injury just before I started the film. Actually, after we had started the film, uh, hit a couple of shots, and then I had an eye injury, and uh, I had to have a surgery. Actually, I have a, I have a titanium plate and plastic behind my eye, and I have double vision. So when I look down, I see everything splits. So when I look down at my hand like this, I see two. So a lot of this whole film was with double vision, and it was very, very difficult to overcome. And it was probably, it was learning a, a front flip again. I mean, and trying to feel it. I got a sixth sense. I got a sixth sense from losing part of my vision. 
And it was a pretty cool experience to just try to overcome that and really drive through it and not let it uh, get me down. But again, it, it took me out of some of the, the spots that we, both Lonnie and I would have liked to be in a couple more, more situations, but we had to uh, heal and make sure that we could do what we can and shine a, at least 100% when we uh, when we are on. So I think we, we nailed what we needed to. We had so much fun. We, we pumped each other up all the time. It's really cool watching each other uh, nail something. Yeah. Uh, a long list of contributing video videographers. Yes. So did one person do the editing? Um, it was, More yeah, our director was also the editor, mostly. Because there wasn't a bit, credit for that. And the editing was phenomenal. That was, that was all It was so, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He was, and, and so how do you get to submit this for an Academy Award <laughs> short? Because <laughs> this is that good. We're in, we're in the process of trying to get it into some um, yeah. film festivals and stuff. One of the plans is to kind of go around and do these screenings to generate publicity. I mean, we want people to see it and to see the value in it. And right, once right. Enough, enough people are talking about it, it could get picked up by film festivals. And we've had offers from television stations in other countries. Oh, yeah, that's right. Entire countries are trying to get you know, rights for it. Oh, but do you wow. remember which countries? Yeah, so it's, um, Australia. Australia, Germany, and France, I think, are going to be playing it on, on television. TV. Nice. We're in negotiation with uh, <laughs> Netflix and um, Hulu, I think video, you said. Yeah, video on demand. There's, there's a lot well, of things in the works. Well, and what about PBS, too? I mean, that's Hopefully, yeah, that's really... also... Yeah. Okay, so then just a separate question. Yeah. There are no women doing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not that I'm volunteering. Please don't read that. <laughs> you should do this. No, no, walking is challenging enough for me, so... <laughs> um, like I said before about parkour in general, like it's it's pretty new in the states. Like, you know, but in Europe, you will find more female practitioners a lot, and um, it's actually pretty commonplace over there too. And it's sick. They have here; it's a little male dominated, and because they see more guys doing it, they think it's not a real thing. But it definitely is. Just like you see, a lot of girl gymnasts are really, really strong, right, like right. nimble, graceful, everything. Mm -hmm. People like that can do just parkour as well. It's just not. It hasn't blossomed yet. I think wow. it's a little intimidating for girls to come out to a session for the first time and see like 40 guys and then there's like maybe one other girl there. Yeah, um, yeah we're really trying to change that. I mean, it's, it's hard because a lot of the guys have this sort of like, they're just there's a lot of testosterone there and it's not welcoming. But um, we, like if, if you look at the UK, there's uh, they teach they teach um, parkour in physical education classes wow. in public schools. So Amazing. so the girls are growing up learning about it in the same light that guys are. It's not like a male dominated thing mm -hmm. over there. So it brings to mind Cirque du Soleil mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, although this seems to be like an independent kind of thing and Cirque du Soleil is coordinated and collaborative more, it seems. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A little more, um, yeah, Cirque du Soleil is amazing. Those athletes are incredible. Some of the shows do have parkour influence in them. Um, like I said, parkour's been around for maybe two decades other than the United States. And With a name on it. Yeah, What's Cirque du Soleil has got, um, my, they're based in Canada, but they, yeah, they're mm. awesome. They're cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What's your guys' aesthetic background and what was the defining moment that you guys decided is what you guys want to do? Um, I did Taekwondo, like Korean martial art, from when I was 7 to 14, and I got bored with it after a while and saw a video of parkour and just kind of went for it. I, I started most of the acrobatic stuff in a gym, just kind of learned it during open gym and had people help me. Um, but as, for, as far as the jumps and just the climbing on stuff goes, I kind of started that around 13. I just wanted to climb on stuff and kind of, to be honest, I was copying video games that I used to play. And, um, but then I discovered that more and more people actually did this and there was a reason behind it and that's why I got kind of hooked. I actually met Lonnie at my very first parkour session like six years ago. He was my first as well, yeah. But I was 22 and he was like 14 or something. Yeah. <laughs> We met shortly after that, and we were actually running a parkour uh, program at Victory G Gymnastics. What was that in 2000? Yeah, it was like 2000. No, 2008 yeah, probably. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. But um, we all—it was really—it was really strange because we all got casted uh, separately without even knowing each other. Um, they had spoken with him, and then somehow they got a hold of me and called me up, and then they started naming off these guys. It's like, wait a second, yeah, like I worked with him, mm -hmm. I worked with him, we hang out and. It was just really strange how just everybody that was like-minded knew each other already all just kind of came together and... Great gymnastics? 
Yeah, what well, was uh, tell me about your background? Well, your my background, background uh, uh, my main background is uh, gymnastics since I was a child. Uh, but uh, if you ask my mom there, I was climbing out of the crib before I could even walk and throw my legs over. Did you did handstands past the China cabinet. Yeah, China cabinet, handstands. <laughs> um, so all gymnastics, but I did a lot of sports. I mean, I was involved with uh, everything. I wrestled in high school. I was a, uh, I was on the football team and um, and snowboarded, but. The, the basis of what I have is mainly gymnastics, and then I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and a lot of the roles and a lot of the movements from that really help. I've surfed my whole life, and you kind of have to learn how to, how to move with a, with a wave. You've got to uh, just kind of adapt to every moment that it's changing. And uh, with gymnastics, the same thing. Even though the apparatus is right there still, I mean, you're going to mess up, and you're going to throw your legs the wrong way, and you're going to have to really adapt to not land on those bars, or you're going to have to take a couple, and, you know, you'll ping pong between stuff, but, you know, soccer, all, all the sports, I was involved with them, but gymnastics was my basis, jiu-jitsu is the other one, 10 years of jiu-jitsu, 20 plus in gymnastics, and, um, and uh, I was in the circus. I was in the circus for a bit through gymnastics and Mystique de la Mer, and I did uh, a bit of that and ran a little bit of my own acrobatic company for a minute and just did acrobatics. And I think that's what parkour is kind of under the umbrella. I mean, all these things where we're flipping around, you you can kind of categorize categorize it as acrobatic skills and stuff. So, I mean, 